Hi guys, the objective of this video is to finish off defining all the different types of weathering processes. This is the second video of two videos which, in which we have been talking about weathering. The first video was all about physical weathering, but now we will be talking about chemical weathering and biological weathering. So firstly, just to define chemical weathering. Chemical weathering occurs when chemical reactions happen and these chemical reactions alter or destroy the minerals of the rock when the rock comes in contact with water or air. The reactions that occur include dissolution, hydrolysis, oxidization and hydration. These reactions occur more readily in warm and wet environments and therefore we can find minimal chemical weathering in arid desert environments. Firstly we're going to talk about dissolution. Dissolution occurs when minerals dissolve in water. The water that comes in contact with rocks can actually be slightly acidic. This happens because rainwater can have CO2 dissolved in it from the atmosphere. And when water passes through soil, it can actually react with the organic material in the soil and become slightly acidic. This slight acidity increases the dissolving action of the water. Dissolution particularly affects carbonate minerals such as calcium carbonate, which is the main mineral in limestone. One example of a dissolution reaction is this one here. Firstly, we have carbon dioxide dissolved in water. This produces carbonic acid. This carbonic acid then reacts with calcium carbonate and produces calcium ions dissolved in water, which then also produces more carbonic acid. This carbonic acid then increases the reaction that has occurred in the first place. This reaction here shows us how limestone is broken down quite quickly by rainwater. Another type of chemical weathering is hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is when water reacts with minerals and breaks them down. An example of hydrolysis is when minerals are broken down into a clay soil. For example, feldspar, which then which can react with acidic water, will produce kaolinite, a clay, plus some dissolved ions. Another type of chemical weathering is oxidization. Oxidization is a chemical reaction where one of the elements that is involved loses its electrons. Oxidization commonly happens to iron when it is exposed to oxygen. That is what we know as rust. And this happens when iron is exposed to the atmosphere. When we are talking about chemical weathering, oxidization is the rusting of rock. And this is why we get the red colouring on some rocks. This red colouring indicates that the minerals within the rock have iron in them. The last type of chemical weathering is hydration. Hydration occurs when water is absorbed into the crystal structure of the mineral. An example of hydration is when certain types of clay absorb water and experience swelling. Hydration can weaken rocks and soil and increase weathering. The rate of chemical weathering actually depends on the type of mineral that is being weathered. Some minerals are less stable than others and these less stable minerals are more susceptible to chemical weathering. If we rank the minerals according to how stable they are, we can get an idea of the rate of weathering that they will experience. Halite, for example, is the least stable and will weather the fastest, while quartz, a mineral that we are familiar with, will weather quite slowly as it is quite a stable mineral. This is why we have beaches of quartz sand because quartz is one of the last minerals to weather and break down. Another thing that affects the rate of chemical weathering is the geometry of the rock being weathered. As we can see in this image here, the corner of the rock is, has three directions in which it can be weathered and therefore will weather more quickly than the edge of the rock which has two directions along which it can be weathered and this will then weather more quickly than the face of the rock which can only be weathered in one direction. This is why classes of rock often develop into spherical shapes. We will now talk about how the level of physical weathering can actually affect the amount of chemical weathering that can occur. Physical and chemical weathering are two processes that work together and aid one another to break down rock. 
We can see from this diagram here that the amount of physical weathering, the number of joints that have occurred through a rock, produces more surface area of the rock, which can then be attacked by chemical weathering. Therefore, physical weathering speeds up chemical weathering. Finally, we'll talk about biological weathering and how biological weathering and chemical weathering work together. Biological weathering is when organisms introduce chemical weathering agents. These introduced chemical weathering agents can increase chemical weathering. The organisms that are known to introduce biological chemical weathering agents are plant roots, fungi, lichen and bacteria. All of these organisms introduce organic acids which then attack minerals in processes of chemical weathering. This is the end on our video about chemical and biological weather weathering. I hope these last two videos has helped you understand physical, chemical and biological weathering and how it produces sediment.